Does that look live to you? Hi everybody. Oh, I see. Cool. Oh, that's my my that's my title. <laughs> Right, hi folks. Hopefully you can see and hear me tonight as opposed to on Monday. And we shall be carrying on or we shall start again actually from scratch trying to make one of these, which is pinch sticks. Okay, so what are pinch sticks? What do you use them for? Well, let me give you a little example here. If you're building a box or you've got a box or a cabinet, something you, that's square and you want to check it for square, you can, as long as the ends and the sides are the same as each other, you can measure the diagonals and they should be equal if the angles are 90 degrees. Now an easy way to do that is with a ruler, but in some circumstances you can't get a ruler in, you might have clamps all around it. Another way might be to use a pair of calipers if they're big enough for the job. And yet another way, take a bulldog clip like this, clamp a couple of little battens together, stretch them out inside into the corners, lift out and check the opposite diagonal. All those methods work, but it's always nice to have a new tool in the workshop. So what I made on Monday and what everybody missed uh, was this pair of pinch sticks uh, which are locking with this little wedge in the top here. So basically we've got a, a hardwood block, a couple of arms that can be extended either way and then a wedge to lock everything when we've got our diagonals fixed. So basically adjust the diagonals, adjust the rods to fit the diagonal, lock it and then you can test the other diagonal and any other things that are supposed to be the same size. So that's what we're going to be making. Now it's going to be a bit Blue Peter style today because I'm pressed for time. So I have prepared some components. I'm going to show you how to make one of each and uh, that should get us going. So I have already got uh, my rods almost finished and my wedge. So I'm going to show you first of all how to make one of the other um, rods or arms, whatever you want to call them. And just a little message to uh, Wolfman70. This drop is still here for you to claim. Uh, if you just reply to my comment, send me the email and I'll get that out to you. If it hasn't gone by the end of the week, then I'll be giving it to somebody else. And I didn't say that the pinch sticks, locking pinch sticks that I make tonight will also be going out to a viewer. And there are details of how you enter a prize draw for that in the description for this video. So I'm going to be making uh, those arms or rods out of this thin piece of material. It's actually a piece of poplar. Uh, you can rip a piece off and then just thickness it down to the right sort of width that's going to fit in your mortise. Uh, so judge it with a mortise gauge and just plane that down. I do that on my little planing attachment I got for my bench. Uh, I made this a few years ago. There is a video on it. If you look up draw boring, you will find how I made this. As you can see, it's draw board together. So the demonstration for draw boring showed you how to make this. That's got a nice wooden stop, nice sharp edge on it. And it's very good for holding onto thin material. So if you prepare your piece to the right thickness, smooth it off, and you, you'll be checking with your mortise gauge or with another component that it's exactly the right thickness. Once you've made that, you need to split it down into arm widths. And I'm going to be using a cutting gauge for that. So I've set my cutting gauge you can see here how wide that is 
that's just a little bit wider than the rods we're trying to make because we'll need to clean them up once we split them. To actually split them, I've set up just a little couple of stops here near the edge of the bench so that uh, I can put a piece of poplar down on here. It's got an end stop that rides up against this in the bench so that's not moving anywhere and it's got this stop which goes against a couple of the dogs. So it's giving plenty of support where the knife in the cutting gauge is going to go and we simply draw that down lightly to begin with gradually increasing in pressure straight grain material would be a lot better for this and you want to make sure you've got a nice sharp cutter preferably one that's quite thin because once you get deep into the material like I am here the bevel uh, is getting quite thick in there and it's, it's more difficult to pull through so when you've gone a fair distance in flip it over to the other side same process I'm going to show you an alternative method in a moment If you've got bad thumbs like me, this becomes quite painful after a while. Eventually you'll get to a point where you can snap that off. Reasonably clean. Now you could try and clean it up back on the, uh, the planing stop here, but it's a little bit wobbly. Much better to go to a shooting board. So you see my shooting board set up here difficult to hold thin components on a shooting board um, but if you've got a backer like this piece of MDF just back it up stops it from flexing and what we're doing here we're not shooting against the stop uh, the fence is simply just holding the end of material and I'm setting the material hanging over a fair bit so the actual reference for the plane is the this batten itself this material not the shooting board And we just run the plane down the side a few times just to clean up. And there's your one arm blank already. Before we rip another one from the same board, you've got to clean up the edge that you've just split it from. So, same process here. Just clean it so you've got a nice square edge. Now I said I'd talk about an alternative. If you've got a bit of thicker material, which is about the thickness that you want your uh, arms to be, then you can use a cutting gauge, as I've done here, set to the thinner width. So this is now going to be the width for the mortise, or just a little bit more. Use the gauge several times, either side. Acts like a curving saw would. Now, depending on your material, you might be able to snap it off when it's this sort of thickness. With this, I can't. But it's very easy now to take that, stick it in the vise, take a small curved saw like a Japanese saw, and you can that will easily follow that line, and you can rip your arms off. Preferably not your arms, but you know what I mean. So there's two methods of making those. Next thing, of course, is the block in which we lock it. This is basically hardwood. It's a couple of inches long, about an inch and a half wide, and probably five eighths to three quarters of an inch uh, thick. We need to make in that a mortise that's gonna hold both of the arms. If I'm gonna find the other arm, what did I do with that? There we go both arms and a wedge and of course a wedge is simply another arm maybe slightly wider this time and we'll do some stop shavings from one end just to give it the wedge shape very slight wedge shape we don't need it to be uh, too steep so if our block will take all of those components 
measured with the thin end of the wedge only just coming through a bit. You don't have to have it square to the block, but it's always nice for appearance. So if you want to square that up, and then just put a mark in with a knife on all four corners. So you, one end of the wedge is going to be, or one end is going to be slightly wider than the other because of the wedge. And because I may not be able to see that, I usually use a pencil, which I can't, oh there it is, I thought I had one. Also just mark that with a pencil as well. Now I'll take a square and uh, give you a rough idea where those marks are with a pencil so we can remove it later on. And take a mortise engage. Set to the, uh, again, the mortise chisel we're going to use. Maybe fraction, very fraction wider maybe. And then uh, we want to mark between those two lines on the edge of the block. So define the mortise both sides. Remember to mark from the same side each way. And if that's something you sometimes forget, a good trick is to always, if you want to centre a mortise, is to uh, make sure your material is the same thickness for a start. And if it is centred, then you should better mark from either side and your pins should all line up anyway. So I've got that in there. It's quite difficult to see. I should have picked a lighter wood like I did on Monday. That's the mortise we've got to chop out. The one slightly longer than the other. Uh, now that I've used the mortise gauge, I'll come back with a knife and just square the ends of the mortise in. Just a little reference for the chisel. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, just pop them in the chat. Very lucky tonight, we've got Shrenik uh, moderating. So I can hear Shrenik. If you put any questions up, he can relay them to me. Fantastic. Now, I was just a little bit short with my marking of that one mortise, so let's just extend those a bit further. Okay, now we can chop. Yeah, I, I do a bit of furniture restoration now and again. Um, it's quite fun, I quite enjoy it. And um, you can't see me at all, That's probably for the best. Yeah, I do do, do it and I do enjoy it. Um, but I haven't taken any professional um, tuition in that, so um, I'm careful with what I take on. And uh, you have to be very careful. Some of the pieces can be quite expensive, so you know if you're not sure about what you're doing, then uh, certainly leave it alone. But I'm gradually getting better and better and extending my knowledge, and uh, yeah, I enjoy it. So, back to work. Uh, next thing then is to chop those out. Uh, it's very difficult to hold a small block like this 
above a leg on a bench, which is the best place to be chopping. So what I'm actually going to do tonight is what I would normally do on something small like this. I'll start it in the vise, just chop a little way through, and then I'll bore the rest through at the drill press. Working on small pieces like this is really is a challenge, to be honest with you. Now, actually, if we can get a, a block below it, off the arms of the vise, that could be quite a help. And I've got so much rubbish in the workshop, I may be able to do that. Now, that's just a little bit low. And that's going to be too thick. Always does to have a lot of rubbish lying around the workshop. So this is definitely not a master class on chopping mortises by hand. But what we're going to be doing is marking out exactly where it is with the chisel. So I can just about see that. It would be much better to do live streams in the middle of the day when the, the light's a lot better. So I'll start roughly in the middle. I'm currently Well, I, I, yeah, well, as you, it is interesting. I'm I'm using the vice, and I wouldn't normally. I would normally do it over a leg, but when you're holding such a small component, it takes a bit of complicated clamping to get it clamped nice and securely over a leg. So, uh, since I'm just going to be chopping a little way in to register the drill. I mean, if this was more than a quarter of an inch in, uh, in width, then I wouldn't be doing it that way. But uh, as I say, delicate things take uh, different methods. And you can, you can tell probably by the sound of my chopping that, that I'm not putting much force into this at all. I've produced a little channel most of the way along just excavate a little bit more and then right at the end and at the ends at the moment I'm not sure which end was my uh, wedge end sloped end so I'm not going to chop those perfectly square just yet because I don't want to get that wrong Okay, so that's plenty to get the, the drill in on that side. Make sure we're all lined up. We'll do the same on the other side. When you're chopping in a vise, or when you're doing anything in a vise, remember if it's, the screw is nice and tight, uh, then there's not so much force down on the screw itself. It's it's friction on the uh, cheeks of the jaw. In fact, in some woods, and probably even in this one, I could do it without using the mallet at all. I could probably just use my weight. In case anyone's wondering, this is a piece of walnut. So it's quite uh, amenable. Indeed there is. Uh, I, I do brand with a laser 
um, my bits and pieces and uh, in preparation for the video tonight I've branded it in the same way that I have this one that I did on Monday so whoever gets it will have a custom marked piece Where's everyone from this evening? We have a rundown of, of what countries you're in. doing carving and I don't want to really pull down on the vice screw but I still want to hold something well then I'll make sure I've got um, leather cheeks in oh sorry yeah someone was asking with what learner was asking whether I've ever sprayed water into the jaws of the chuck to uh, to help with work holding that's not something that I've done. Uh, it's interesting to hear it. If I'm holding something in the vise which I don't want to really crank down on in the vise uh, for fear of squashing it, but it won't hold properly, then uh, I'll often use some leather. So face the jaw cheeks with leather. to do this at night when you realise that you don't have any lights trained on what you're actually trying to do. We really should be using something like this to hold our work. If you put a clamp around your work, it just makes it that little bit safer. so I can get out from my shielding. Uh, obviously somebody that knows that I've been shielding from the pandemic. So yeah, great news today that there is a uh, some vaccines available and uh, yeah I'll be getting mine as soon as I can
I did feel a bit patriotic and was thinking that I'd wait for the Oxford vaccine. But to be honest, I don't really, really mind which one I have. Good point. Now, this is a good, uh, good point just made by Shrenik that maybe having more than one vaccine would be good, but then maybe one would stop the other one from working. Now, I made quite a hash of that drilling. I couldn't really see what I was doing. So, I stopped a little bit short. I'll try to remember the uh, the prize draw rules that I set out in the description. I think what you need to do is share this video, like it, and uh, leave a comment. And that comment should include the words "pinch me" plus your name. And uh, whilst you're at it, if you if you like what I'm doing, please be. Feel free to share it on Facebook, Instagram, etc. The more people that come along, the more time I can give up to doing videos teaching people about woodworking, teaching people how I woodwork. I'm trying to shred everything that the drill left behind and get to at least halfway through reasonably straight. It's actually one of those things where the accuracy doesn't matter too much as long as it holds the rods in place and as long as the wedge action works then uh, it's fine. It's not like you're trying to create a glue surface. Now, both of these tools have been made from offcuts. Trying to get a better camera angle for you, but I'm seeing something that I don't recognise.
may have just lost speed from that camera. Let me just try and open that up again. There we go, that's better. So hopefully you're seeing a better picture now. For some reason I've got a, a freeze going on the on the video stream. So whilst I'm just doing this rather boring job of getting the mortise cut, how many of my viewers are regular attendees on the Bench Talk 101 Zoom call each week? If you haven't heard of it, Bench Talk 101 is uh, a group set up by some English woodworkers and focused on keeping woodworking going as it was in the various clubs and associations around the country. So we have live talks from guests and lots of chatter amongst members, tips, help for new woodworkers. Definitely worth checking that out. So if you look up Bench Talk 101 on Instagram, you'll find a link to the Zoom. And the next one is tomorrow night, 8.30 Greenwich Mean Time. Do we have anyone in from that tonight, apart from Shrenik? So I'm through, just get it cleaned up. Suppose I should check that uh, my arms are going to go in. Yep, good. So I'll just repeat uh, that forum, that Zoom forum. It's Bench Talk, Bench Talk 101, and you can find that in the chat. I right, hear Lego Man's going to check that one out. Be great to see you there. Nice for me as a, as a YouTuber to see some of the people that have watched my channel because all I ever see is the odd comment. So it's nice to see people and have a, a little word with them over the video. Right, so now I'm just getting prepared to square up the bottom. I'm going to check which one is the bottom. And which one is the, the wedge? So that should be the flat, I believe. That is the wedge. Don't need to get too precious with getting the wedge angle right because if you cut your mortise first, you can adjust your wedge to fit nicely afterwards. And this other end should be straight down.
doing this yourself you could use a block that was a bit uh, less wide make doing the mortise an awful lot easier Well, something else I did to this block before I started was I knocked all the sharp edges off it just with a block plane. So that looks a little, oh, I've got a little lump in there. Try to make the bottom surface, it's going to hold the arm nice and flat. So the arm touches the end of the mortise on that side and on that side, so that's nice and flat. And then for the other end, the wedge, again, we want the same. And here we've got a little bit of a wobble, so I've got a bulge in what is the slope. Getting closer, just creep up on it because if you uh, if you get it wrong, you'll split out the far side. If you do split out the far side on a, a mortise on something like this, where the width isn't particularly crucial. You can, of course, take a few shavings from that side and return it to something that looks as though you've done it perfectly. Still got a slight bump in there. Plane maker's float would be uh, very useful here. So it's like a, well, you get two different types. I can't remember the names of them. One where you've got uh, like a file on narrow edge, and one where it's on the the wide edge. 
and uh, it's pretty much it's like a, a file but a bit more like a saw teeth on it so quite aggressive for the ones that I've seen I don't have any but I've managed with managed without them So that's now seating, oh yeah, almost perfectly I would say. Let's check it with the wedge in place. So come back to me over here. So we want to put one arm in, second arm. Still a little bit of a friction fit, and then the wedge. I can't remember which side is the is the wide side. That one. There we go. And that wedge just pokes through enough to hopefully get your thumb on to release it, which is obviously what you need to do. Maybe take another couple of shavings off the wedge over on the shooting board. Just so it's not quite so tight, goes through just a little bit further. So that's now protruding through, let's get this out of the way. Wedge is now protruding through about three eighths of an inch, so it's easy then with a the thumb to push it back and release the rods. Now they want a bit of wax on them, and I'll clean the inside of the mortise out a little bit more so that they glide just a little bit easier. Now I mentioned what I'd done to the block earlier, just so that you don't cut your hands on these sharp edges. I've taken a block plane, just taken a few passes down the long edges, across the end grain. So everyone, every edge has been broken. So it's, it's lovely and smooth to hold. The, the only thing now left to do is finish off the arms and what I've done to the one arm already if you can see that I've just put a blunt tip on it so I've beveled it down so it's quite a sharp angle actually probably 20 degrees or so and then just at the end just rounded the end over so that goes into the corner of a box uh, very nicely so I'll do that on the other one and that's something else to do here at the shooting board I'll use a piece of backing MDF again, hold that against there, and I've just got a wedge which I can give myself an angle to work with. Slide that up to the edge, which you can't quite see. So I slide that all up to the edge of the shooting board. So it's just holding on to the end of the arm. Someone's asked a question about whether a double bevel would be better on this rather than a single bevel. If you'd seen what happened on Monday, uh, which nobody could have done because I, I made a mistake with the streaming, I did put a long double bevel on this one. But I find that a lot more tricky and certainly I, I think um, a beginner would find that a lot more tricky to hold this at such a narrow angle and shoot the double bevel. So for this one I've opted for a single bevel. It will work really well. Um, I don't know, oh, where's the box gone? Here we go. That'll go in there perfectly okay. Uh, the bevel of about 20 degrees and with it rounded on the end. So the actual thickness at the end is probably about um, 64, 32nd maybe. It's, it's pretty pretty sturdy. I mean, I can drop that on its end and it's not denting or anything. So I think that'll be fine. If you're making something to measure larger boxes, which of course you could be, then you'll be using 
um, larger arms on there so they'd be a lot thicker uh, so in their length and, and width their whippiness will be a lot less obviously got to chop a bigger mortise uh, for the ends of those because it's larger material it's much easier then to put a double bevel on it it's easier to hold and you could work that with a block plane basically like that to put a bevel on both sides if you're doing really big work you can imagine you could use a couple of I don't know one by twos in a large piece of four by four as your locking block but I think this should be fine so both of those now I've got one sharpened end the other end is blunt and I'll just run that over a bit of sandpaper just to round the the edges off and same with all the long edges on here as well it's important to make your tools as safe as you possibly can you don't want to get any splinters nobody wants to get any splinters there are enough sharp edges around the workshop as it is so that's together wedge in from that side I think it was there we go one locking pinch sticks that can be yours if you just follow the instructions in the description and now I shall have a look at all the chat see if there are any other questions you might have take my glasses off and begin my wind down for the evening so uh, woodwork learner this would make a great idea for Christmas gift idea uh, yes it would um, as you saw here it doesn't take long to do and uh, once you've done one or two you'll be getting really quite fast at it uh, yeah make some Christmas gifts for your woodworking friends just check they're not all making them for each other because you or if, if you are making them for each other make different sizes and uh, yeah that's a good idea any other techniques I've uh, used this evening that have been a challenge for anyone? It's all relatively easy stuff, I think. Um, chopping a mortise. Actually, it's great practice. Uh, chopping a, a narrow mortise like this is, I find, a lot more difficult than doing a, a wider one. Uh, so great practice in that respect. It's good practice with shooting, uh, planing, so a good practice piece and once you've done a couple yeah they'll make great gifts anything else before I go well something I'm going to challenge all of you with is to come up with ideas for future live streams because uh, all the ones I've done recently have been have come from ideas but at the moment there are no outstanding ideas so I'll have to come up with something for myself unless there's anything you particularly want to see so I'd, I'd welcome any ideas pop them in the comments or contact me through Facebook or Instagram apparently I'm very easy to find sunrise dovetail uh, just been suggested by Sh rising sun dovetails just suggested by Shrenik um, I don't know how long anyone's going to want to watch a live stream of because that would take quite some time. <laughs> yeah. Apparently Matt Esler's done that and destroyed it at the end, showing that it wasn't particularly strong anyway. Uh, we better learn to make a simple lamp. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okie doke. That's a good idea. So a, a real... Um, full on make a project yeah I like the idea of that let's see if we can fit that one in what I can also do is, is do two or three live streams that link up together as I do a build and that might be interesting and maybe some videos on particular tool maintenance uh, Shrenix just suggested me uh, over the winter you might want to look after your tools a little bit more carefully depending on where you store them so yeah that could be a, a, certainly a future topic as well right well I've taken up enough of your time I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening 
and uh, don't forget to enter the prize draw. Cheerio everyone, thanks for watching. That went okay, I think. Thank you. Um, I press the end stream button on whatever that does. Yes, end. 